Thank you for your patience tonight. Um, tonight, our discussion is a preliminary discussion on cosmology to get you aware of the most important aspect of what we do. All right. And I'm going to use PowerPoint tonight just to be very definitive about the information because we already have uh, course history and course credentialing on this particular subject. And if anybody is interested in, you know, uh, taking those courses, I'm going to show you, you know, how to do that or how to sign up for those particular courses and make some basic statements about uh, Aboriginal University so you can understand some things. I know some people that's gonna keep coming in late, so we're gonna let these folk in as we uh, talk to everybody. This will be recorded, so we'll upload to the website so everybody can keep this particular information. I'll start off with some announcements before I go into the cosmology information. This Sunday, we have another PT test. You are required to participate in the PT test. Do your best to complete the PT test and time and record your results and send that to headquarters. Um, just some words. Last week, we had people who were here at headquarters to participate. And let me be, be very frank about this. There's no reason to lie on a PT test. It's this is to develop for those of us who need help exercising group exercise and those who are already exercising to continue to um, improve. I was outside with all the people here who are headquarters, and I know for a fact that people lied on their times because I was on the track. With my clock. Whatever your reason is. Please don't do that. I'm not calling no names. I'm not sending no emails to nobody. I'm just going to make this statement one time on the record. There's no reason to lie on a PT test. Whatever your time is for the mile, that's your time. Whatever amount that you're able to jump rope, that's it. Um, whatever your issue is with um, completing the push-ups, if you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. The, the point is to give effort and to build consistency with keeping our temples clean and learning about exercise, learning how to breathe, learning um, how to hydrate yourself, learning to move at your proper pace so that you don't uh, overwork or burn yourself out. All of those are important. If you've, if you've never, ever, ever, ever ran a mile, or walk them out. Walk as far as you can. All right. Um, I'm experienced at CPR. We need to make sure that we have at least one person that is experienced at CPR. If you're working about out about or with alone, don't overexhaust yourself. Take your time and build yourself up uh, into being able to complete that PT test. So, like I said, I was present. I know for a fact that there were people who lied about their mile time and what they completed. There is no reason to lie on a PT test, all right? Those of us who are at headquarters, y'all already know who you are. So that's private, that's personal. But it does say something about you that you would be present amongst all those people. Everybody got stopwatches out there now. And you say, for instance, when I, when I ran my mile, I think I did like nine minutes or something like that. There were people who, I ran the whole mile, nice little pace. There were people who were walking and running who I lacked who said their time was faster than mine on the, on the form. And I'm looking at the form like, why? Why would you do that? Are you embarrassed? Are you trying to prove something to somebody? We not we we didn't have it as a competition. Nobody was competing. If they were, it would probably be healthy competition. Just laughing about it. All right. So again, 
There is no reason, absolutely no reason to lie on a PT test. I'm saying that because that is a drill infraction. It's a small one, but it is an infraction. And it also says that you will lie about other things that are more important than a PT test. Because there is no pressure on anybody out there. We was all having fun. We had the music playing. We out there, you know, going live, just sharing, um, you know, just hyping each other up a little bit. We're doing push-ups. This is family, and we don't need that behavior amongst us. I understand we're work. This is one of the reasons why we're working our temples out and working our minds out, so we can get away from shame, guilt, um, excessive or dysfunctional competition. All of these things are bad habits. That's all they are. And we all have habits that we're working on. And there's nothing wrong with having a flaw. That's a part of life. Like, I got flaws. I be going on online and going off on people sometimes. Just wilding the fuck out. Then sometimes I got to go back like, damn, son, why you do that? Like that. If it's, if it's justified, it's justified. But if it's unjustified, I go back to the person like, look, I ain't mean, I ain't mean to do that. Then I go right back to the place where I did it at and make the apology. We all fuck up. That's a part of life. It's normal, but we should not be lying about a PT test. Bro. It's just a PT test. That's all it is. So that I felt that that was important to say because I noticed it on the spot and I'm sitting there thinking like, why does the person do this? And it was not just one person, it was multiple people who was doing it. So maybe they felt like they had to prove something, they want their time to be good because we're not sharing this information with nobody. Nobody gets to see this information. This is information that we keep on record. So if you need access to it to see your improvements, that's it. This, none of our honor information is shareable with uh, anybody. The only reason I published the information on Facebook was twofold, to publicly show who was supporting their nation and two, to deal with a uh, person who I knew would do something with that information. And I needed that in order to seal the deal with a case against them, and it worked. So other than that, we don't share a proprietary information, any information you sell on intakes, any, that is, we have a non-disclosure agreement not to share that information with anybody. We're not here to do that. So nobody's PT tests or PT results is going to show up anywhere, ever. These, this is our information that we have amongst each other. And um, the only people who are going to know are people who are there working out with you. So, you know, keep that confidence that um, we're here to work out, improve, and improve our health. The purpose of the PT test is to ensure that nationals are living a lifestyle that uh, show and prove it through exercise, exercise science. All of us should be healthy. All of us should be in our proper weight range. I remember uh, when I first came into the FOI, you couldn't even get an FOI uniform if you were overweight. Years later, they had people, you know, who weren't eating how to eat to live, weren't eating it, weren't eating away big giant FOI uniforms. So I was watching the nation breach its own code because even though I had to eat to live, you know, um, there are things in there that we continuously study and improve upon. If you eat the way that the messenger said, you won't be obese. Neither will you be uh, atrophy. This, even without the improvements. But you can't tell me people in the mosque was eating one meal a day and they waddling through the search procedure and they got an FOI uniform that looked like, you know, that joint could go on a dinosaur or something. You know what I mean? Like, nah, bro. We exercise so that we can improve our health and keep our temples healthy. I was on a conversation with another national today a very intense conversation and argument. I won't say who it was, but I will say this. That person is fat, out of shape, and don't take care of their temple. And so 
I wasn't about to argue with the person. I just made it be known, like, bro, you are not in your proper state. You need to get into your proper state. Your emotions are out of order. Everything is out of order because you're not taking care of your body. So the PT test is to make sure that everybody is taking care of their bodies. When we start giving out honor uniforms, we're not giving out no uniforms to fat people. If you overweight, sorry, cousin, it's not happening. You're not about to embarrass us at the summit and water your ass into the building with a big ass honor uniform on. No, it's not about to happen. And I'm not making no jokes about nobody. I'm just saying it applies to me too. If chief want to sit here and get fat and get out of shape, no, nah, son, you can't put on the honor uniform because there won't be no size to fit you because we're not ordering no big ass uniforms. You know what I mean? Unless you're just a big dude. You know, we got people like Brother Charles. Charles, like six, seven, he's a big dude. He's not fat. He's just a big dude. Yeah, you get a big uniform. But we're not doing that. You know what I mean? We want all of us to be healthy. Why do we want us to be healthy? There's a number of reasons you need to be healthy, right? You need to make sure that there's no toxins in your body and you're working out and the circulation is good. Nobody should be coming to us and saying, oh, I'm in Arna. I got cancer. I'm, you know, I got, you know, all, we, that's not the world that we're here to build. We're here to share all the knowledge with each other and keep everybody on the same page when it comes to health. And all of us, you can't even uh, be, fat. what if you get fat and you have a husband in Arna and he start looking at other women and y'all get into a conflict. Then y'all gonna come to me to get counsel. I'm gonna tell you straight up, sis, you're big. He's he's dissatisfied or vice versa. You know, you get all big and then she's seeing dudes work out at the, and she start looking and y'all get into a conflict. That's human nature. Everybody wants a mate that looks good, that's healthy. You know what I mean? These are, so we obfuscate all these problems by uh, teaching you exercise science, giving you a PT test, all of that. There are lots of overweight people in Arnold. All we had to do is be a uh, support to one another and be a team to one another to, to work that out. I don't care if you 21 or 61, everybody should be, have good shape, be able to walk, be able to, um, you know, do basic exercises to protect uh, their health. So once again, last point, do not allow your PT test because if I see it next week, because we got Sunday coming up, we got PT tests. So everybody gonna be meeting up or doing it at home or whatever. Just try your best in your PT test. You know what I mean? Try your best and that's all we asking for. And we'll guide you and help you with, you know, improving your energy levels, um, you know, supplements. We, we constantly doing that anyway. So, you know, we're gonna keep that as a good look to keep everybody healthy. All right, so cosmology. First thing I want to do is this. In Arna, as it currently stands, there's all, throughout all of my years of teaching, there's only two people who did dissertations. That's myself and Brother Ba'ak. Now, how we have it set up at Aboriginal University is whoever completes their dissertation automatically becomes a part of the accreditation board. What is the accreditation board? The accreditation board is a work in progress, but basically it's people who have completed uh, a dissertation successfully. This means that they have published their own material, done the research so that other people who are coming in um, can have people they can look to for support and guidance. Um, when we have think tanks, it doesn't only have to be me. It could be all the other people. You know, anybody who's, who's done a dissertation can help with think tanks so that we can have constant communication, constant support constant uh, dialogue about the systems, health, cosmology, uh, uh, jurists, all of them. And so that when someone else wants to form classes, they have the credentials to form classes. Now I see people forming classes, nothing wrong with that. I can't stop your commerce, but those classes are not ARNA credentialed sanctioned classes. That mu there must be a line drawn. I cannot stop for anybody from making up any type of class that they want. In fact, I encourage it because I want you to improve your economy. I want you to, uh, to, to deliver the information, et cetera. However, we don't want no ranky dank information, no sloppy 
information being distributed in the name of Arnold. The purpose of the dissertation is to stand before the people, produce your literature, and to have it reviewed. It shows that you are willing to research, you have the patience, you're going to put in the time, the effort, and show a uh, respect for the community of people who are also researchers who are also dealing in the information or who are students white people learn the dissertation process from the moors period we got all of the history of all of the oxford university and all these universities that our ancestors helped them build this is why you can go to al jahiz and you can see yes he was a religious scholar but he also had over 200 books on human evolution, zoology, health, medical sciences, because in order to be a teacher, you are expected to be proficient in the information. And in order to be proficient in information, you had to publish materials that were reviewable by other people. This is what you call peer review today. The peer review today is bullshit because it's based on uh, scientific racism, uh, political prowess, putting out information selectively to a slave population of people who go to college. But the original peer review process was, no, it's just like you're going in a dojo. You get in a circle, you circle up, you want to get to the black belt, you got to show that you're proficient in the science. And that means you have to physically fight in order to show that you learn the forms, you're able to hold the forms, you're able to be proficient. So shout out to everybody who does classes, nothing wrong with it, but they're not Arna classes. They are your classes until you do your dissertation. And then once you do your dissertation, wild the fuck out. You know what I mean? Go out here, put the stamp of approval on it. Boom. Y'all get what I'm saying? All it shows is respect for the circle. And that's all we are attempting to do basically with everything that we're doing is to show research, um, uh, respect for the circle, right? So me and my op, we did our dissertations. Y'all want to do your dissertation? Hop in them classes, knock out that information, get them dissertations done. Then guess what? It also serves as commerce for you because now you have a book, put your website up, boom, you got something that is both commerce for you, a teaching tool for your classes, and it's something that is inheritable by your children. So the more we keep doing that, we got a whole new library. Y'all see what's in these books is bullshit. So the, the duty of the original people in Arna is to make a new library system. And it doesn't only have to be in book form. We got all types of ways to make it now. You can make it digital. You know what I mean? You can put it in the form of documentaries. You can put it in the movies. You can put it in all these forms. All right, so that's all I wanted to say about that. Make sure. So now I'm going to show you where you can go on the main website if you want to sign up for um, courses, uh, in, specifically in cosmology. If Baak has some, um, he can state those to y'all and share those with y'all um, at any time that he wants as well. All right, so let me go to the registration for this. Give me one moment so I can share my page. All right, I'm going to the main website right now. And we're gonna go right here to the store. And when you go to the store, you're gonna see something that says psychology department. All right, you see it right here. Psychology, astrophysical department, boom. So these are all the certifications and courses and the materials and books for cosmology. All right, you might wanna make your own cosmology deck. Boom, you go through that dissertation, while out. That means that you have your own deck, you can design it, you know, you can put your own writings and words of memory on it. This is designed for us to be creative as possible. We just want to keep the respect for the process. So you can go here and sign up for a cosmology course, or you can go to Baak's uh, uh, website page if he have a, has a course up there, and you can sign up for the cosmology course. All right, so... I'm gonna jump right into this PowerPoint so we can get this information. What I want you to be able to do before you leave today is understand what we are studying. We are not studying cards. Cards are symbols used to teach us 
what we are talking about. This is not about no damn tarot. Especially in the way that tarot is used in modern times. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it can be quite um, pseudo, if you want to just use that word for it, in, in a lot of ways, even though there are people who do good, a good job at it. But we want you to have the best understanding of cosmology. And so this is not about cards. This is about living, sentient energies that are around you and in you. Literally, we are talking about your cosmos. We're talking about stuff you can look up in the sky and see that emits energy and being able to use it as a measuring tool. The best thing about this, and no disrespect to anybody who might be studying any particular thing in a book, that's the only book that can't be tampered with by foreigners, outsiders, even us. The only book that we can read that will be holy forever is the universe around us. And all we have to do is become literate at it. They could take a Bible, look what they did to it. They take a Quran, look what they did to it. Pert M. Heru, a bunch of white Egyptologists telling you what the Meru Netter means. And we can go on and on. The Vedas, the Papo Vu in America, look who's translating the text. But for sure, ain't nobody about to send no goddamn machine and mess up the sun. The best thing they could do is try to put clouds on the earth to block it out. And it's still there, cooking their ass. So you're not about to mess with no celestial objects. And if you are on that level, you are on such a supreme level, your mindset is not to even be uh, uh, something or uh, somebody that would tamper with something like that. All right, so let me jump into this PowerPoint and we're about to um, go into the subject. And if there's anything with the audio or anything, just let me know. All right, so what you should see now is something that says, that says cosmic fire at the top. Does everybody see that? All right, cool. Yes, awesome, awesome. All right, so um, these two books are books I used to use, but these have been combined into a newer book. Y'all seen a new, newer, newer uh, textbook for the class. And um, let's jump right into it. All right, so this is your holy book. This is your only holy book. In Arna, yes, we can use the Quran for translation to understand Moorish common law. Yes, we can use uh, ancient Mayan script to try to understand something. But this right here is the law. All right? This is the law that is above the, constitu the Arna Constitution. This is the law that is above what anybody says. This is the law that is above the Jural Society, Aboriginal High Court, anything that you could think of, because this is the law that cannot be tampered with. And that's why we set inside the Constitution that honor is based on natural law, and this is how you communicate natural law. The Moors called this the Um al Kitab, which means communication source. Um means mother, source, or community. Kitab means a writing, a book, or a form of communication. This is the source of our communication. It is what we will use in Arna forever. All right? And as we get people who are more proficient, even in court cases, we can use the cosmology to decipher whether someone is telling the truth or not. Some of you are even beginning to study that. All the way down to the minute. To know what card is present, to know what energy is present, to listen to testimony and tell whether that person is emitting that energy in a functional or dysfunctional way. Or go, we can go further than that. There are other things that we can do, but that's the, that's the rudimentary part of it. So here we have the sun and the nine planets, and then we add three other stars to this that are a part of a constellation that are important to the energetics of the earth. All right. We study uh, astrology all the time. Astrology is a pseudoscience. It has elements that are correct and elements that are un not correct. Most of its 
uh, concepts are based on faith, especially as the people, how they transmit and teach it today. So we're here to correct that particular information. We can't correct it if we don't know it. This is your holy book. All of the ancestors that you're reading about in books, Babalao, Obatala, Eshu, all of it comes from this. This is the source. There are no spooky spirits flying around. Eshu is not going back and forth between Olodumare and the people. Um, uh, Tahuti is not somewhere flying off in space or somewhere with a mask on. Uh, all of that was symbolism. It became religion. Now a Babalao will charge you $2,500 to teach you about some cowrie shells and ancestors. And because some of the information is correct, you fall right into it, just like the Bible. Some of it is correct, our people give hoodwink, the Quran. Some of it is correct as it's translated now, they fall right into it. Nobody in Arna has to fall into those traps. We have the ability to you know, go into the information, but we wanna understand the history of this particular information, the basis of it, the science of it, all right? Before we get into what is your card? Because when somebody is asking you, what is your card? They're asking you, what is your energy? And they're relating it to these stars or planets. So if I say king of clubs, that's a card. Those are all symbols. The club represents air, that's the element. The king represents a star, a particular star, uh, a Syrian star. So now we get to study the functions and the impact of these stars and planets on us, as opposed to thinking that you're pulling somebody's cars. No, you're not pulling nobody's cars, you're pulling somebody's energies through symbols, okay? All right, so let's go into this. I thought that this was important so that we could understand basic communication. The brain and the mind are two different things. A brain has a mind, but it's not the only thing that has a mind. Once you understand what a mind is, then you can understand not only does your body have a mind, the earth has its own mind. Because all a mind is, is the emission of waves from a sentient organism. The propulsion and emission of waves from a sentient organism. And the earth is a sentient organism. It's full of other life forms that live on it and off of it and from it that are sentient. Sentient means intelligent, all right? So the earth has its own magnetic field, has its own motion, and that motion and magnetic field produces things. It has a cause and effect relationship, just like the sun, just like all the other planets. By the way, which are spheres. If we have any flat earthers in Arna, you're not gonna last long with that concept. We're gonna, we're gonna burn that out real quick. I know there's a lot of flat earth concepts going around. Oh, Ali, we don't live on a globe. We don't live on, y'all need to keep studying. And we're gonna help you out with that study. But the earth is intelligent. The sun is intelligent. All the other planets are intelligent. We live in an intelligent universe, all right? So when we start going into dark matter, dark energy, all of these things, we have to ask ourselves simple questions. There is no effect without a cause. If the earth is spinning on its own axis, it's because of force and intelligence. If it's going around the sun, then the sun has a relationship with the earth where it is causing the earth to revolve around it. If the sun is moving in a trajectory around something else, we need to know what that something else is and what is causing it to move because ain't no ghosts making the sun, the earth, Mercury, Venus, Mars, all the other planets move and have life on it.
So this is our study. We're babies at it, but we have enough of it to lay a foundation, all right? Which leads to some evidence direct from our ancestors. Here, if you look closely, there are people being born out of a tree. The word she, one of its meanings is tree. Literally means tree. And we're talking before the tree of good and evil in the Bible. The reason why trees became sim symbolic of life is because of their role in our life. There will be no oxygen without trees underwater and on the ground. And that is because they have a communication with the star, our local star, that produces oxygen for us. That is what you call an intelligent design. That is not a mistake. That is not random. That is an intelligent design. So this goes to show that our ancestors understood the science and they used these symbols to let you know that they were aware of the science. There's much more I can go into about trees, but that's the basis, the basic, the basic of it. All right. We use it for all of our food, trees, bushes. This is where our food comes from. In an intelligent design. All right. So in our system, we relate each planet to its equivalent behavioral, uh, emotional thought dynamic. And let's just make this clear. Everybody that is born on this earth has what we call a birth chart. The birth chart tells you where these things were when you were born. This is why you can look at people who were born under third polarity and see similarities. This is why you can look at people born with their sun sign under 12 polarity and see similarities. It is because of the position of the sun to the earth at the time that we start breathing the atmosphere. And taking in breaths from the earth's magnetic field ties you to the earth and the energy that is guiding the earth. Meaning the sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, all of these planets and stars have energetic impact on the earth. And when you start breathing inside of this field of energy and oxygen, then you start to take in that energy and it leaves a signature on you at birth. It also leaves a signature on you throughout the transit of your life. So this is a, a simple rundown. It gets more complex than this. This is a simple rundown of what these things, these numbers represent. Because as we go through the cards, this is going to become important to you. The sun equals self. The moon equals your emotions. The mercury equals your thinking, communication, and your mind. Jupiter e equals growth and expansion. Uranus equals sudden change and revolution. Venus equals beauty, marriage, relationships. Neptune equals imagination and creativity. Saturn equals structure and organizing. Mars equals action and sex. Uh, the Sun and Pluto both represent transformation and destruction are equal to number 10. So these numbers are associated directly with these planets. All right? Another look, the she or the tutu she. There have been all kinds of slander against us that we are culturally appropriating other people's culture. And our job is to prove that we're not. There's a specific gene that makes kinky hair. Mexicans don't have the gene. Europeans don't have the gene. Asians, your Asians, don't have the gene. So when we look at, without even going to the, the genes itself and testing, when we look at your hair, my hair, all of our hair, and we look on these walls and we see these people with locks and skin like this, we already know 
from the art what genes were present in the people. So there's no way people can come along and say, this is the ancestors of the people who predominantly pictured themselves in Mexico today. Quit playing. You are the culture vulture. Because now you're going to have to explain to me how all those genes got shut off all of a sudden. But you are the direct descendants of these people. And this is from the Bonham Peck uh, murals. All right. And by the way, this is not reconstructive art like they do in Egypt. Some of the statues and the things that you see in Egypt were rebuilt by Arabs and Europeans 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 20 years ago, repainting the art. That's important to highlight. All right. And I'm not dogging Egypt. I'm just saying you have to be careful with these people because these people are very, very tricky at distorting history. This is what you call the Tortuguero Monument. This is the monument that we use to prove that when we were given the 25,000 year calendar by uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, everybody used to ask, where was this calendar from? Where was this calendar from? Nobody discovered it until we discovered it in Arna. If they did, i like for them to step forward and prove it. The 25,000 year procession of the equinox and the solar calendar, the solar year, is nothing but the tune calendar. 25,000 years equals five back tunes. A back tune is 144,000 days. Now you see where they stole this stuff from. You go to the Bible, you see 144,000. You think that that's been in there for a long time. Absolutely not. And we went over this in time deception. I never did do a part two on that, but I wanted to go into it. But basically what I was telling you is that they added eight years to the uh, calendar, the Gregorian calendar. We know when they did it, we know how they did it, and we know why they did it. So when the Mayans was talking about the world was gonna end on that 13th back tune, it didn't end, coronavirus came and the whole earth got shut down. Literally, right on time. You ain't never seen that in modern history where every country on the earth is operating from some same fake protocol to shut down the commerce, make people stay inside of their houses across the globe. Now the scary and exciting shit is what happens afterwards. Because now we're starting to see the exciting and the scary shit. It's all cooking up at the same time. But y'all, we need to know that our people could literally go into trance, meditation, even bury themselves underground for three days to uh, pull what people are calling the Akashic record come back out of that ritual and write down what they saw as prophecy. So our people had all kinds of ways of being aware that we would reach this state, but we that we would come out of it victorious. This is why I keep telling people in honor, don't worry about shit because we already won. Literally, all we have to do is play our part because for whatever purposes, we manifest it at this particular time and everybody who comes across the Arna line, you literally are the, the prophetic elect. It ain't no doubt about it. Whatever you have inside of you is that important. You just have to have the desire, the will, the structure, the environment to bring that shit out. That's what we're here to do, all right? Going further, just so you know that we don't be out here making shit up. When we say, they say Zulkin, we say Zulukin, it literally means Zulu kin. Zul or Zulu means dog. And he's talking about kin, the dog star. Everybody who studies astronomy knows what the dog star is. That is the Sirius constellation. 
So it goes to show our ancestors were very, 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 very excellent astronomers. Excellent astronomers, all right? Let me go through some of this. Just to get you to understand the polarity system, we deal with the polarity system. We do not deal with zodiacs. There's no such thing as 30 degrees zodiac spaced out equally. Then they tried all kinds of tricks. They tried to add a 13th zodiac. Then they tried to go to uh, the Indian system. And then the Sidra. They don't know what they're doing with all of this to understand or explain how these energies permeate the human body and the human consciousness and how it's related to the stars because they don't understand the system. All right. We have a Manzil system, which is through the moon, not, not the lunar calendar, a Manzil system, which we'll talk about a little bit. We have the polarity system, which is basically the tune calendar. And then we have the Zulu Kim, all right? which is how we uh, navigate to use the divination from all the calendars to come up with these 52 cards that can describe 52 personalities. All right. Then we go to the elements. When you look at the elements on the cards, you're dealing with the basic elements of your makeup. Fire, air, water, and earth. Very simple. If you want to go technical and deal with the elements or the molecules, fire is hydrogen ions or photons. Air is oxygen. Water is H2O. And earth is carbon and all the other minerals. That is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with what literally makes up all bioorganic life. So the cards are not only to be read for prophecy, we can look at the cards and tell about your health. We can look at the cards and tell everything. Because this astronomy is dealing with energy and all you have to have is a proper interpretation system, which is what we are developing. Basic Thamania uh, Anam, fire, war, air, water, and earth, again, this is not pseudo teachings. We can take it to science. We can take it to government. We can take this anywhere. So on page nine of your protocol manual, we set up a table on that page so you can understand understand everything. We could take this table and do readings, um, whatever you want to think about. This table, which is based on the Arna star. The Arna star has eight points because it represents this. Again, even our flag is teaching us the divination science, the astronomy science, the biological science, all of the sciences that are around us. To give you an example, boom, you see a seven of hearts, you can go over here and find the ancestor. Then you can find a planet. So it's not seven of hearts, all right? The hearts represent water, the seven represents an ancestor or and or what we mean to be a planet. This is the system as it's in the Zulu kin. You'll see the count, the 13 count. The dot equals one, two, three, four. The bar equals five. Dot and a bar, six. Two dots and a bar, seven. Three dots and a bar, eight. Four dots and a bar, nine. Two bars, 10. One dot, two bars, 11. Two dots, two bars, 12. Three dots, boom, 13. We can show you this in Texas, ancient Texas, or what we call in Texas, Nevada, New Mexico, Alabama. These writings right next to Moorish script. So it shows the synergy between our ancestry. They developed schools, mathematics, etc. I told you all get the book Saga America by Dr. Barry Fell because all of this information is recorded inside of it. Because people are going to start arguing with you, with you like you might get into an argument with these black Indians. Our ancestors were not Moors. Okay, you gonna let, we're gonna let you argue with these rock artifacts, uh, everything that was left. You have to deal with that. We're not gonna, we already light years ahead of y'all black Indians. 
Y'all trying to create a cult. We are trying to continue to create and develop governing systems. What is a cult? A cult is when you have a dumb, unscientific ideology leading the thoughts of people to nowhere. Fake idol worship, fake cultural worship, trendy things that you could throw on Instagram to make yourself look cool as shit. But it's leading, you can't build institutions. And it won't survive the people who are doing the corny stuff because most of their children are probably looking at them like y'all strange or y'all weird. We are here to teach the science as best we know it at this moment and to use it to build institutions. Just further studies, these ain't no goddamn uh, Mexicans. These are Aboriginal people literally serving each other chocolate. You know how many white companies serve chocolate now and you're supposed to have an Aboriginal patent on this. This is your culture. If you ask the average so-called African-American, where do chocolate come from? They're going to say Nestle, Snicker, or whoever else. Kit Kat. They ain't never seen these images. They don't know that these images exist and they don't know that they invented something that is now a trillion dollar industry globally. This is why I like teaching about ancestors, but all this ancestor veneration and worship, the shit is dumb. I'm gonna tell you why it's dumb. Because whatever our ancestors decided to do or not do created a moment for us that is not good. You can call it prophecy as you want. We can always beat prophecy. And how you beat prophecy is understanding energies and making the right decisions. If a group of us secluded themselves because they saw the rest of us that was about to fall, that was an intelligent thing to do. At least they kept the records of it. But there's nothing stopping us from falling again if we decide to abandon that which keeps us whole. So we need to uh, venerate our descendants, need to plan our children. We need to get in. We gave you the book for free, uh, Immaculate Conception, came in your email. There shouldn't be no woman, women coming to the Jewel Society talking about they want child support. Because we don't do that at Arnold. You're supposed to plan your children. You got the information now. You can plan a boy or girl. You can plan a polarity. You can, plan, you can plan the whole thing. And now you know the energies of, do you know how difficult it is for us growing up? Nobody to guide us. And then we got to wait till we 20 damn near to figure out what we want to be in life or sometimes older. We have the opportunity to take children from the time that they're young, mold them into the things that they are energetically designed to be successful for. Not only that, we can put them around uh, compa compatible partners at a young age. We can look at their charts like, oh, Ali got sons? Boom, I got daughters. Let's look at their charts. They're compatible. Let's just have them around each other, some or whatever. They're going to grow up around each other. Next thing you know, they get to be, you know, into adulthood. They've been around each other. They feel secure. They're around the same culture. Boom. They get married. They're not going to have the problems that most of us have had in relationships trying to figure out who ain't crazy as fuck to have a, have a life with. No, we can plan it from when they're young. So when they, as they get older, they know these sciences, they know what they want to do in life, they're not stressed about it, and then they just get right into the things that they're supposed to be doing. My youngest son is 10 years old now. He's been playing instruments only for four months. I put him around a whole bunch of things that dealt with art because that was all in his chart. Soon as he got nine, he was like, oh, I want to play instruments. I want to be the greatest musician of all time. Boom, that's what you want to be? Got you. I'm going to get you whatever instruments that you want to play. Now he's learning them at a fast pace. He already know all the black history of Beethoven. 
all the Moorish history of instruments and designs and the lute and the harp and where all this stuff comes from, you know, the octaves, he's learning about, now he's 10 years old, learning about how octaves affect a human, the human body. Imagine him, oh, he's 10 now, imagine what he would be when he gets 25. 45, he gonna be something that we never imagined. Like, I can't even imagine, even though I planned him and made him, I'm looking at him like, yo, he asks questions that I just have no idea. I'll be like, no, I don't know that. I have no idea. That's something you're going to have to figure out. Literally, because I'm sitting here like, damn. Like, what? You know what I mean? He's on, he's literally, to him, stuff that's avatar stuff is not just TV. He's thinking, oh, I could probably do that. And I keep people away from him or mother children that tell them, oh, you know, nah, keep your asses away. Even their mother sometimes I gotta get on like, yo, don't even listen to her. Listen to her when she give you instruction. But if she say something, cause she's just on her level. You have to understand. I tell my children all the time. There are people on certain levels. It's not for you to disrespect them or whatever. It was how they were raised and that's their limitation. But don't let them put that limitation on you cause you could already see that you have questions or thoughts that they think is funny or they'll laugh at. So we have to plan our children because we can literally in one generation take the earth back, like one generation. Shit, damn near, we can damn near do it ourselves right now. We ain't even popping off yet, niggas be hollering about what we doing. I do a lecture on Dr. Sabi or Dr. Africa, niggas crying out to the damn woodworks. It's just a damn lecture. I ain't even, Go into, you know, the actual functions and doing shit. You see what I'm saying? What do we make a supplement that gives you total recall? Then the motherfuckers gonna be saying we witches and one of them say the risk trial I asked. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's because they put limitations on their mind. If we have children and ourselves adopt the mindset of not putting limitations, bruh, it, this is why our ancestors made the predictions that they made. They knew that when we got it, we was going to get it and take it beyond what they did. Because that's what your children are supposed to do. Your children are supposed to be better than you. I literally mean that. Better than you. In everything that they're doing. Or even the, the, the younger generation. I be giving stuff to y'all like, shit, y'all going to figure out shit that I ain't never figured out. I don't care how much Nutriplex I take. If y'all take a Nutriplex too, my neuroplasticity can't catch up with y'all. You see what I'm saying? It's not even supposed to. This is why I can't get, I'm going to, this is, I might seem like I'm off subject, but I'm on subject. I can't get, uh, when people are jealous of, of, of younger people or the next generation, because they're supposed to take it beyond what you took it. When I was in the nation of Islam, a bunch of old ass haters. Surrounded by a bunch of, I don't care what they say, how many salutes they give you, how many times they recite their lessons, how many times they recite their general orders, a whole squadron of hating ass old ass niggas. That's why they can't make no progress because it's old niggas at the top holding back all the young people or trying to make them bots like Ben X or uh, the other brother. Like, let them niggas roll how they roll from their own soul and their own mind. Don't make them mimics in Paris because when your crazy ass die, they're going to be looking stupid. Because they didn't said a whole bunch of shit on the record. Niggas going to be like, you was down with that weird ass shit. So in Arna, we never going to put y'all in that position. As long as I'm here, I ain't going to never let these old ass niggas hate on y'all. Because trust me, they be trying. We got old ass haters in Arnhem. Trust me, bro. Literally. So my job is to protect y'all asses so y'all can get into this information. So y'all can plan y'all children. You know what I mean? You don't want to be like me. I was married for 12 years. To two women. One for seven years, one for 12 years. You know what I mean? The only reason I survived it you know, I've never been on child support now, is because I have this science and I'm, I'm, I'm more intelligent than them. Literally. I can run circles around them. 
That's what saved me. If I have this, nigga, I'll be like Taj Tariq Bay trying to file some sovereign paperwork on some shit. That don't work. So y'all have a t- y'all have a, a great opportunity to choose your wives, plan your children, and give them this science. This is a science. You don't have to believe in nothing. This is not nobody religion. Anybody can make y'all your family into a cult and play y'all. You get this shit, you can take off, and nobody can't turn you around. Because it's not about belief. None of this is about belief. This is about you studying your ass off and doing the things that can build your intuition, your dream world, all of that. So you can let anybody tell you what they want to tell you. I know for a fact I sit at home and have dreams about people talking about me a month later, three months later, that shit pops off. And it's only because I'm engaged in this on a daily basis. I read myself daily now. I had stopped for a while. I got my, 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 I said, nope, put my charts back up. I need to know my energies every day. Because, you know, sometimes when you move in and move, nope, every day. And when I do it, that's when the dreams and the other stuff start kicking in more. So, you know, it's just encouragement. And it goes to the point. Amongst aboriginals, there should be no greed, jealousy, depression, envy. Love. Why? Because if everybody is sharing information, everybody can get the bag, everybody can shine their creativity, what the fuck do you have to be envious and jealous of another month? Like I said, I was on the phone arguing with another national, and they said something to me that let me know that they was pocket watching me. Like, motherfucker, you're a grown ass man. What you doing looking at my post, pocket watching me? Then when I get on the phone with you, you say some crazy shit like, oh, yeah, you making all this money, but I asked you for this. I said straight up to you, I was like, bro, I got three women to take care of, six children. What the fuck do I look like when I had already gave you money before? And I showed, and you showed me you was lazy, but you you ran into a problem. You come to me, I'm like, nah, bro, I don't got it. Like, bro, we don't do that. We don't be pocket watching other people. That's weird. And the only reason I post stuff like that is to motivate you because, like I said, I was walking around selling herbs for ten dollars in a bag, and niggas used to laugh. Ah, that nigga, what the fuck are you doing? Selling herbs, nigga. You need to go to the league, nigga. You need people in my family. Oh man, you need man. You still young. You are twenty five years old, nigga. You still, you still could go to the league, motherfucker. I ain't about to go to the Canada, play football for fifty thousand dollars a year, get my body all busted up, then go be on somebody's practice squad, or even if I end up starting in the NFL. By that time, I had learned everything I need to learn about white supremacy. The coaches blackballed me in college anyway. I was like, fuck y'all. I could get money another way. I like sports. I'd rather watch it. Said if I want to go, if I want some sports, I go, you know, uh, run some full court or something. You know what I mean? Have some fun. I don't need to play football. Everybody, see, this is what this is how you know people are phony. Because everybody around me knew I was good enough and it was banking on me making it so that they can get in my pockets. Your own family members will do that to you, bro. Like, nigga, go get that million-dollar football deal so we can eat. And it's not, you know, we have it in us naturally to take care of our loved ones. But when you come with that, it was just a reveal. Because I was only 25 when people was having all this talk. I'm like, oh, this nigga's is trying to hustle me. You know what I mean? I had went into the uh, nation. They're like, oh, this nigga, you know. I'm glad I made the decisions that I made because if I would have listened to what other people was telling me what to do, at this point, I probably would have had bad knees, body all banged the fuck up, you know, made a few hundred thousand or maybe some millions in the the NFL and with no trajectory though, with no purpose. Still, because I wasn't born here to play football. I wasn't put on earth to play in the NFL. That's, if you do that, that's a good thing, you know? But that's not your purpose in life because, you know, you play football until your 30s. You got the whole rest of your life to live. What is your purpose in life? So we need to be finding our purpose. 
So that let me know that that person is greedy. What does it say here? A greedy person has a perceptive view of possible lack internally. So they will violate others' energy system in order to feed theirs. You see what I'm saying? A jealous person has no proper perceptive view of self. So since they have the illusion of separation, what I mean by that is that um, they're separated from their purpose. They try to be somebody else, not realizing they have just taken the position that they are nothing and void. Thus, they need to take up somebody else's cosmic space. We don't do that. We, we, study, our, we study our energies. So now it's, it's beautiful because we get to act, study our energies exactly. Like, oh, this is what I have inside of me? Well, let me play with this a little bit. Let me play with this a little bit. Boom, this is what I like doing. This is what I love doing. When you, find, when, you design, when you design your purpose, when you find your energies and design your purpose, is nothing like it. And you will excel. You're going to excel. Like, it's nothing to stop you. This is the energy. You gotta, you gotta realize something, and I'm not, I'm not saying this lightly. When you find your energies and you designing, design your purpose, you are duplicating the act of the creator in designing the universe. Because you are taking energies that are only potential and working them to make them into visual matter, literally. That's the self-creation taking place. A person like that, they don't have nobody to be jealous of. They don't have nobody to be envious of. Once you design yourself and you start working on yourself, you love yourself. You like yourself. You see what I'm saying? And so this is literally the problem with the earth. The problem with the earth is people don't know their energies. And they're not designing their purpose. Astrologers and other people will tell you, you got to find your, how are you going to find a purpose? You cannot find a purpose. That means that you're looking for it out there somewhere. That's why we say that they are fate driven. No, you have to identify your energies and work it, work it, work it until you get to that space. And the more of us that do that, the more we will understand why we were predicted to be the leaders. We're predicted to be the leaders because you gotta think, it's 7 billion people on the planet and only a small amount know what we know. A very small amount. So you, your children and your children's children have the greatest inheritance that any being can have. The ability to read their holy book, the only one in existence that nobody can fool you, and to design masterfully who you are born to be. You cannot beat that. This is why I have full confidence on our future, our present successes, and our future successes. And we're going to get rid of all of this other stuff that's going on, you know, over time. All right, so let's come to some of this stuff. Procession of the equinoxes. The earth has a wobble. And astronomers are not telling you what the wobble is really about. Let's go back. We can show you what the wobble is about. You see how this earth is tilted? So when it's over here and it's tilted like this, the Northern Hemisphere is experiencing summer and the Southern Hemisphere is experiencing winter. Now, generally speaking, there is no North and South. We say North and South because it's convenient. But if you're down here, up is always out, <laughs> period. So we're on a sphere, but we use these terms conveniently. But when we're over here, the pole is not drawn to the sun, is drawn to something else. So in the north, we're experiencing 
winter. In the South, we're experiencing summer. But when we get to the point of the winter solstice, it's the most holy moment. And this is why we had the Inti Rama festival in the West and the, uh, what we calling Leila al Qadr or Ramadan you know, in the East. It is because the pole is pointing towards the, what we're calling black hole, the Sagittarius A constellation that the earth is going, earth and sun are all going around. That space, that place has more magnetic force than the sun. In fact, it is causing the sun to revolve around it. This is why the, the pole is pointing that way. And so as the earth and the sun go in a circle around it, when the, when the earth, when the sun is on one side of it, right, it's pointing that way. By the time, this, say 15,000 years from now, we're on the other side, the planet will be pointing inward towards the Sagittarius A constellation. This is how you get the slow wobble that you see here. What well, looks like a wobble, okay? There it is again. And we can chart those pole stars, right? Our ancestors called this constellation Amaru, the constellation that never sets. It showed that they knew the calendar system. We have the most uh, advanced calendar system in the West. All right, there's seven stars in the pole stars, and they change about every 3,714 years. All right. And our she ancestors had all of this stuff down pat. They even had names for each one of the polar directions, etc. So I'm just giving you some of the history. When we go over to the east, they knew what the dog star was, they knew what Orion was, they knew what celestial astronomy, and they put it literally into the monuments. This is not a Neb or a Pharaoh. This is a constellation stele representing Orion. Orion represents the equatorial belt, the celestial equator. This is how we are able to get the 90 plates that we have using the celestial equator and the Earth's equator to calculate it. So we know the cards were based on astronomy the fact that they have 90 plates because there's 90 degrees from the celestial and the earth equator to the pole going in both directions that's mathematics those plates are mathematics literally all right so we go further this is how we find our birth card or our sun card using the days Right? And these are the 13 ancestors that we use in that circle, which are the same as this. Okay? All right, so we have our cosmic plate here. This is the plate we use to find your solar or your birth energies. It is the first plate. You can see you have all of the hearts, all of the clubs, all of the diamonds, then all of the spades and the crown. This is water, this is air, this is earth, and this is fire, spades of fire. The aces are sun, the sun, the twos are the moon, the three is Mercury, the four is Jupiter, the five is Uranus, the six is Venus, the seven is Neptune, the eight is Saturn, the nine is Mars, and the 10 is Platoon or Pluto. And the Jack, the Queen, and the King are three stars. All right? So this is how we calculate your energies. Then we go to the earthly plate where you find what we call your character card or sometimes called planetary ruler card. Your cosmic card shows you your attributes. 
your character or planetary ruler card shows you how best to use it. All right. So if I'm a king of clubs, that's dealing with teaching, research, knowledge, prophecy, intuition, mastering all of those things. How am I supposed to use it? A jack of diamonds. Show these people how to use it to build wealth. Literally. Show them how to use it to build wealth. The jack represents the prince. All right? That's why a lot of older people or people my age, they don't even like me. They be like, yo, you be acting like you 20 years old. I'd be like, yo, biologically and in my cards, I am. I'm a club. We teenagers. You see what I'm saying? We teenagers. The clubs are teenagers. We always going to, for, for maybe to a spade, I might look immature. But they, that's because they're judging me based on some false paradigm. Like, I'm always supposed to be youthful. Right? So we got to understand these energies. There it goes again. And so let me break down something to you before I go into the formula to find your card, because I want everybody who doesn't know how to do this to do this now live. Right? You're going to write down what your card is based on you using this formula. Each one of these has a row with a planet by it. Mercury row, Venus row, Mars row, Jupiter row, Saturn row, Uranus row, Neptune row. Then you have a column, Mercury column, Venus column, Mars column, Jupiter column, Saturn column, Uranus column, Neptune column. The reason these are here is to show you what neighborhood you hang out in naturally. Some of us are in the Mercury neighborhood. That's the communication again. That's the mental aspect. Some of us are lovers in the Venus row. The compassion, the artful, the loving. Some of us are in the Mars. We just want to get shit popping. We might be a boxer or a fighter. Something that deals with aggression. Jupiter row. These are the people, visionaries, wealth builders, do things big. All right. Saturn, about organization, structure, militant. Uh, being a CEO of something and managing things in a proficient manner. Uranus. The rebel, they're going to bring the unique idea that hasn't been thought of. They are not going to bow to slavery. They're going to fight against that shit. And then Neptune, the prophets, the creators, the ones with the high imagination, the ones who will bring the idea that is necessary for the time. So these are all of our neighborhoods that we hang out in and we need to know what types of neighborhoods we're in. So if I'm finding my sun card and I do the formula, you see my king is right here. Jupiter, expansion, visionary, wealth builder. Then I come over here, Saturn, organizing, structure, institutions boom that tells me where i am then i can go to the mundane spread same thing you can find out where you are on both and they both communicate your attributes about you so let's go here this is the formula you're going to take the number two times your birth month so mine is six so i'll be Two times six, which equals 12. This is a fast way to do it without using the chart. 
You can use the chart. And I go back to the chart. This is a fast way to do it out the chart. Once you get that number 12, you can add it to the day you were born. Mine is 17. So I would add 12 plus 17. I will come up with the number what? 12 plus 17 is 29. I would subtract 29 from 55. Once I get that number, which is 26, I will go back to the cosmic or the spiritual spread. And I'll start right here at the Ace of Hearts and count 26 spaces to find out my birth or solar card. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once I get here, I can't go. I have to go down one row back to the beginning. Eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Down one, back to the right. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. That is my birth card, my solar card, my uh Jupiter row and my Saturn column. I have found my space. Now I got to read all about the King of Clubs, learn about the King of Clubs attributes, learn all the things about it by studying myself. And then, wow, these are the things, the elements that I was born with um, that I can use to fashion and design a purpose. So when we go back, to this chart right here, and we look at June 17, what do we see? King of Clubs. So I gave you the formula. This is also the chart. You can screenshot this chart right here and use it to find every, everybody's birthday. The only day that does not have an exclusive card is December 31st. And December 31st, you have to know what time of day you were born at. Because if you were born from 12 a.m. to 12 p.m., you are an ace of hearts. If you were born after 12 p.m., going to 11.59 p.m., you are a king of spades. So it's the only day you have to know your birth time to determine the card. All right, now that we have our birth card, everybody should have it. Let's go over the formula again. Two times your birth month plus your day. Subtract that from 55, you're gonna get a number. Once you get that number, you have to go to this space to figure out what that card is. And this goes all the way up to 52. All right. Now, trust me, there is a lot more to this card than I have said or put out, but we have to give you a great foundation because once you get the foundation, it's going to give you your, it's, it's re literally recalibrating your neurons to think in this way. This is a different way of thinking. And once you start doing the readings proficiently, you will see what I mean. Next, you are going to find your planetary ruler card or your character card. In order to do this, you must, 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 see if I have it here. I think I forgot to put it there. All right. You must, must, must know your zodiac sign. What polarity are you? You can use the common terms now. Are you first polarity or Aries? All right. Which says that you're ruled by Mars. Are you second polarity or Taurus? Which says your ruling planet is Venus. 
Are you third polarity or Gemini, which says your ruling planet is Mercury? Are you fourth polarity, Cancer, which says your ruling planet is the moon? Are you fifth polarity, Miss Norma Leo? It says your ruling planet is the sun. Are you six polarity? which is misnamed Virgo. The ruling planet is Mercury. Are you seven polarity? All right, which is Libra. Ruling planet also Venus. Are you eighth polarity? Scorpio. Now Scorpio is given two ruling planets, Mars and Pluto. So you will see your cards show up differently with Scorpio. I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right. Are you ninth polarity Sagittarius, which is ruled by Jupiter? Are you 10th polarity Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn? Are you 11th polarity Aquarius, which is ruled by Uranus? Are you 12th polarity, which is uh, Pisces, ruled by Neptune? You need to know your planet because it's going to show you what your second card is. So let's go to Ali. Ali is the king of clubs. His polarity is third polarity, which is what? Ruled by what planet? Mercury. So we're going to go to the Mercury space. All right. These are the spaces. Screenshot it, take it down. First space to the left of your sun card is the Mercury space. The space to the right is your moon card. All right. Second space is your Venus card. Third space is your Mars card. Fourth space is your Jupiter card. Fifth space is your Saturn card. Sixth space is your Uranus card. Seventh space is your Neptune card. Eighth space is your Pluto card. The rest of these deal with readings. We don't have to go over these right now. Let's go back. Since I'm ruled by Mercury, first space to the left is Jack of Diamonds. That is my character card or planetary ruling card. Now I know how to use my king of clubs. Because it could have been another card. All right. Could have been a card that's totally different. Could have been a Mars card. Nine of spades or something. Okay, I need to be teaching combat. Combat training, something physical. Martial arts. But the Jack of Diamonds leads me to tell me how to use my King of Clubs. You need to go. So whatever your planet was, if it's in the Mercury space, then your zodiac sign is allegedly Gemini and Virgo, or third polarity and sixth polarity. If your space is Venus, the second space, is second polarity or seventh polarity, AKA Taurus or Libra. Third space, Aries, sometimes Scorpio. All right, that's Mars. Both Aries and Scorpio can interchange with Pluto and Mars. I've explained that before in classes, but we'll go in greater detail uh, later. Fourth space. All right, that means that you are ninth polarity, Sagittarius. Fifth space. All right, Saturn, that means your polarity would be Capricorn. Sixth space. All right. That's the Uranus space for those who are 11 polarity or Aquarius. Seventh space, Pisces or Neptune. Eighth space. Scorpio or Pluto with Air, or Scorpio and Aries ability to take readings for both of those. All right. All right. So we got those spaces. That's your second card. Now we go to our third card. Our third card takes the day number that we were born on. I was born on the 17th. You resolve that number to is common one unit is eight. So if you have a double number like 22, you have to resolve it to a single digit, four, 26, 
eight. 29, 11, um, um, 11, then two. All right? You have to get it in one digit because it's going to tell you the number so that you'll know what space to go to. All right? So let's go to mine. My number is eight, which equals Saturn. So I have to go to the Saturn space. Let's do that. I'm 17, which is eight, which is Saturn. What is my Saturn space? One, two, three, four, five. Eight of hearts. That's my third card. This is the uh, father, the loving father and loving teacher card. That's my key card. The key card unlocks the other cards maximum potential also called planetary number card so my fatherhood is key to unlocking all of my other potential and i can see that with my children i know all of my children are gonna work for me i already I already know all of them in some capacity whether they are teachers working directly all of them or being in a fatherly position to other brothers to help guide them, you know, in their lives. I've been that since I was young. So your third card shows you how you unlock the power. Again, you find the number. Let's say if my number would have been nine, I would have went to the Mars space, Mercury, Venus, Mars. Let's say if my number was 10, it would be double. I would go double, I would be a double king of clubs, but I will also incorporate reading when I'm reading the queen of hearts, which is, you know, uh, for, for, for both Pluto and the sun. So now you should have written down your three cards your innate potential card which is your birth or solar card how to use and design your innate potential in the regular world which is your planetary ruler card also called character card and the key card or planetary number card by taking the number that you were born under resolving it to a single digit and finding that space and those spaces are right here Mercury, first space to the left, Venus, second space, Mars, third space, Jupiter, fourth space, Saturn, fifth space, Uranus, sixth space, Neptune, seventh space, Pluto, eighth space. And for those who are Cancers, the moon card uh, to, the, to the right of your birth card, and that will be your uh, character card. All right. Once you get these three cards, I cannot stress enough how you have the core of what you need. There are way more extensive readings. We can do daily readings. We can do uh, find out the energy for the week, uh, find out the energy pervading over 52 day period, the year, down to a minute. We can find out all these energies, but you need these three because these are the three that teach you how to craft your own design. We got moon cards, vertical moon cards, horizontal moon cards. Um, you got all these cards that can teach you about your emotions and all of that. But these three are the most important. So what I want everybody to do is take those, write down your three cards. All right? That's important. Excuse me, Don. Yes. I was only born on the 21st. Now, how do I resolve that down to the single digit? I'm going to let you answer that because you ain't about to tell me you don't know what two plus one is. Well, I, I, I didn't know if, what we was adding or subtracting or dividing or what. Oh, we only added. Okay. The, 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 if you got 21, it's two plus one. Just like mine was 17, mm -hmm. so it's one plus seven. Only doing okay. addition, no subtraction, no multiplication, no division. Only right. addition. So if your birthday is 
30, 29, whatever it is, you're gonna take those two numbers and add them together to get to one digit. All right. And once Perfect. you get to that one digit, you're gonna use this right here. Mercury. Figure out the space. So yours would be Mercury. So what's your birthday? August 21st. August 21st, what you, a five of clubs? Yep. All right, so we go to five of clubs. Boom. So what's your planetary ruler or character card? Three of diamonds. Three of diamonds. Got it. Oh, no, excuse me, your key card. We're talking oh. about your key card, not your plan <laughs> yeah, planetary number or whatever. You was adding the numbers together. So that's your third card. Your three of diamonds is your third card. So, so August 21st, that's right on the cusp of um of leo and virgo so based on that would be based on your 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 um uh, your age i have to look at ephemeris but i'm pretty sure that you're peeking over into virgo so because your zodiac sign is six polarity or virgo the ruling planet is mercury so you will have a double three of nine. <laughs> so you'll be a five of clubs birth card solar card and then you will be a three of diamonds character and planetary ruler card and you'll be a three of diamonds key card you don't have to move three spaces since it's a three or you just go still the one space to the left of the right, five of go cards. back down because in here we in class if you make something up, you have to explain where you got it from because I ain't tell nobody with a three to go three spaces. When you get a three, as soon as you get a three, you go here and it deals with the planet Mercury, right? Right. Because the only reason we resolve the number down to a digit is to find out the planet. That's the only reason we do that. Okay, so I'm assuming. Right? So these are all 10 numbers and these are the planets that go with them. Once we do that, though, we find out what place we're supposed to go. And this is where y'all might be getting confused at, because I know when I teach class, sometimes people have a hard time with this. One of the things that this class teaches you also to do is only follow the instructions that you are given. Don't guess or make up something in your head, because that is going to retune the way that we have been trained wrongly to think is to make an assumption or to guess. One of the things you cannot do in this class is guess or make an assumption because it will lead to an inaccurate conclusion. So when you find your number, whether you were born on the first, the second, or the 30th, you have, we're talking about the key card now. You have to resolve it down to one digit to find the planet. So don't use 10, use one. My birthday is the 28th. Right. So you're going to resolve it all the way down because one and 10 are basically the same one, the same thing. If you look at it, boom, boom. I have a quick question, Dr. Ali. Hold on. No, no questions yet because I already know okay. how it's going to get crazy. <laughs> I, I am not answering any questions about cosmology tonight because I know we have other questions to answer. But I'm only going to stick to the subject of you finding your three cards and everybody getting their three cards. And only that. So y'all have this is your introduction to it because some of you might end up taking courses or whatever, but you need to know what your three cards are and you need to understand what they are. So hold off y'all questions. Let me go back. Boom. Resolve your number to one digit. Find out the planet. Once you do that, now you know where to go. Because the Mercury space is not the third space even though Mercury is ruled by three. Follow me? Don't mm -hmm. let your mind do that to you. This, this, is, this is called organized thought. Okay, so, it. so if you resolve the number and it comes to three, that means your planet is Mercury and the space is the first space to the left of your birth card. I'm confused. <laughs> right? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep saying the same thing over and over again. Y'all get it? 
This is how simple it is. Let's go back. Let's go back so we can, and I'm, I'm going to go over this last part here because I'm not staying on this thing for four hours tonight. <laughs> like I did the other day. All right, so let me go back to the formula. The formula is going to help you. If you follow the formula, you will get everything right. This, before I follow the formula, let me help you out even more. Everybody look at this chart for 60 seconds and find their birth or solar card. Everybody do it. The month is up here. The day is down here. So for instance, if your birthday is November the 1st, you would go here and here. And the card that brings November 1st together is a six of diamonds. Let's see your birthday was on November the 30th. November 30th. You come right here and it's the three of hearts. All right, so everybody look for their birth card. Please mute your mics so we don't hear what's going on in your background. Everybody find their birth or solar card. Even though we find it right here, we're about to go right back to that formula so you can write the formula down too. You can screenshot this so you can have it. This might be your first time doing this, but this is a classroom. In a classroom, only follow the instruction you are given. If you follow the instruction that you are given, when you get the next instruction, everything will be ordered. Don't guess, don't believe, don't, don't try to do anything with your mind, but the instruction. All right. All right. So we got that. Let's go back to the formula. The formula is two times your birth month. If you're born in January, that's the first month. February, that's the second month. March, that's the third month. Y'all know how to count y'all months. I ain't about to be in here. Y'all know how to count months. All the way to 12. Once you do two times your birth month, you get a number. Whatever that number is, add it to the number of the day you were born. For example, I'll give you mine. Two times my birth month, which is June. June is the sixth month. So that's two times six. Two times six equals 12. The birth day I was born on is the 17th. So now I'm taking 12 and I'm adding it to 17. And I get the number 29. Once I get that number, I'm subtracting it from 55. When I subtract 29 from 55, I get 26. You will get your own number. Whatever that own number is, now we go here. And if you got a number between one and 52, which is the only numbers you can get, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. One of those is your birth card. 
once you get your birth car, we leave the spiritual spread or the cosmic spread and go to the world spread or the mundane spread. You have to find where your card is placed because this is a different spread. So my king was here last time. Now it shifted down to here. Now we have 12 zodiacs or polarities moving from Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. All of those are first polarity, second polarity, third polarity, fourth polarity, fifth polarity, sixth polarity, seventh polarity, eighth polarity, ninth polarity, tenth polarity, eleventh polarity, twelfth polarity. They're all ruled by a planet. Aries is ruled by Mars. Taurus is ruled by Venus. Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Cancer is ruled by the moon. Leo is ruled by the sun. Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Libra is ruled by Venus. Scorpio, rulership is given to Mars and Pluto. Use either one for now or both, but that's, that'll get more extensive because you have doubling of cards. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. Pisces is ruled by Neptune. Once you figure out your planet, you want to find your second card, this is what you have to do. Screenshot it, save it. If your card was Mercury, you go one space to the left of the birth card. If you rule by the moon, you go one space to the right. And I'll go back to the spread to show this. Venus, two spaces. We're dealing with spaces now, not just numbers, spaces. Even though Mercury rules the number three, it's the first space to the left. It's not the third space. It's the first space. Even though Venus is ruled by number six, it's not the sixth space. It is the second space. Mars is ruled by the number nine. You're not going to the ninth space. You're going to the third space to the left of your birth card. Jupiter ruled by um, the number four and it's the fourth space. Uniquely. Saturn is ruled by the number eight but it's the fifth space from the birth card. All right. Uranus is ruled by the number five, but it is the sixth space from your birth card. Neptune ruled by what number? Seven. And it is the seven space. See, these things have a lot in them, but I, I can't go into those things right now. I'm just trying to teach you the basics. All right. And Pluto. Pluto is ruled by the number 10 or one, and it is the eighth space. So when I go through those spaces, I use myself as an example. I am third polarity or Gemini ruled by Mercury. So I go to the Mercury space to find my card. If I was a Taurus or a Libra, I would go to the Venus space, one, two. If I was um, a Cancer, I would go to the moon space, which is one space to the right, to a close. If I was a Leo, I would be doubling this king and going to the eighth space. So now Leo has two character cards or planetary ruler cards. And both of them explain the, how to use their birth energies. One is the same as your birth card. One is the eighth space. Virgo, six or six polarity ruled by Mercury. Bam, it would be the Jack. Libra, just like Taurus, ruled by 
the planet Venus, two spaces, one, two. It would be a four of hearts if, if I was a Libra. Scorpio, ruled by Mars and Pluto. So it would be one, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you got two rulers. Sagittarius, if I was a Sagittarius, it would be the fourth space. One, two, three, four. If I was a Capricorn, it would be the fifth space. One, two, three, four, five. If I was an Aquarius, it would be the sixth space, six of clubs. If I was a Pisces, it would be the seventh space. That's how we find our character card, also known as planetary ruler card. Everybody should be able to find that now. Next and lastly, we find our key card, also known as our planetary number card. Take the number of the, of the day you were born on. I was born on 17, so I add only, no subtraction, no multiplication, no division. Add only, the one and the seven together, I get eight. So whatever your number is, if it's double digits, add it together till you get to single digits. Once you get to the single digits, now you know what planet rules that number. I'm ruled by Saturn. So I would go back to the mundane spread, which has the eight of diamonds at the top. And what is the Saturn space? Let's go. Saturn space is the fifth space. So let's go to the fifth space to find my key card. One, two, three, four, five. That's how you find your three cards. I don't see one for sun. You don't see what for sun? What are you looking for? Um, the key card. I'm going to yep. add up First to one. Right there. Number one. But when you had the other screen up, I don't what know where to find it. This right here? Mm, no. If you're trying to find the key card, this is the spread you find the key card, and this is the guide. So Jeez. you don't see one what for the sun. She's referring is to that the, the mundane spread. I just put the mundane spread up. That's the mundane spread right there. Okay, so just go one over, one to the left. If you're if if you are a Leo, and you rule by the sun, what do we say? Leo sun sun is one. The sun is the number one, meaning if you were born on the 10th, your key card would be ruled by what? The sun. sun. So if we go back to the spread, this is your sun card. That's why we said Leo would double. So I'm a Eight. six of clubs. That means that you will be a double six of clubs. Because the sun is the same space as the sun. It's the sun card. Okay. And then it will also be the eighth card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have two um, key cards. Thank you. That's for Scorpio, not Leo, right? No, we're talking about the number one for a key card. We're not even talking about planetary ruler or character cards. That's not what she asked me. But if we get asked that question, you just repeated what I said. Scorpio has two and the sun has two. Scorpio and Leo. But if your birthday is one, you still use Pluto as well as two rulers. If your birthday is one, then you're gonna go right here. And use this guy. Okay. Yeah, but did, did, did she say her birthday was one? And, or was it 10? That would make the difference. It doesn't even matter. If it was 10, one, 28, it's still the same thing. Because the number has to be resolved to one digit. This 10 right here, I have it here, but this is this is a one. 
essentially. Okay. If I did this right here and deleted it, I'm saying the same thing. Because one plus zero is one. I only had it there because to help people interpret. All right, so this is very simple because it does get complex. But again, anybody who's taking the class, they can share with you. Let's say you're trying to do a weekly reading or some type of other type of reading. It requires the instruction. It doesn't require guessing. It just requires to make sure that you're reading what you're seeing and then moving off of that. It's almost like putting up sheetrock. If you don't find the beam in the wall and you drill that cheap rock into nothing <laughs> or on top, layered on top of each other, that wall gonna come down. Those beams are there behind that wall for a reason. You have to find that beam to make sure that sheet rock is nailed into a solid beam. You can't just build a wall and say, oh, I got a wall built. Nope. There's a specific instruction that needs to be followed in building that particular thing. So I got a question. Um, how do you know whether, whether to go to the left or the right for the key card for that last one? All right, so let's go back to it. We go to our regular spread. This is my birth card, AKA sun card. The only time I would go here to the right is if I get moon energy, right? And moon energy for the planetary ruler or character card can only come if I'm a cancer or a fourth polarity, right? The only other way you would go that way, it's right here, is if your number resolved to a two. So that would tell you to go right because it's the moon. The moon card is always to the right of your birth or your sun card. All the other cards are to your left. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. So, I know it is. I was about to say, so my birthday is 12 13 77, right? Yep. You I have got 13. Five of Club, Nine of Spade. You have no reason. To, you said 12 13? Yes. So you're Sagittarius. So you have no reason to go to the right because 13 um, is going to resolve to four and you're a Sagittarius. So that also is going to be four. I got the nine of spades for my planetary ruler card. All right, so say your birthday again. Let's go to it and let's make it easy so everybody can use this as a teacher woman. 12, 13. Bow, bow. So five of clubs, right? Correct. All right. So you're a Sagittarius, so it's the fourth space. One, two, three, four. Oh. I went, I went to the other side. I went down to the two and then went to the nine of spades. No. Mm -mm. If you're a five of clubs right here and that's your card and you are finding your two cards, the only way you would go to the right is to find a moon card. You don't have a moon number, which would be a two, nor are you a cancer. So there's no reason to go to the right. You will only go to the left. One, two, Nowhere else to go here. Got to go down. Three. Got you. Four. And then your number is 13, which resolves the four. So you still be going to the Jupiter space. So you are a five of clubs, double seven of diamonds. Double seven of diamond. Got you. Yep. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Got you. And can I get my planetary? I think I have the other two. I'm four, three. You're, you're four, three. What does that mean? Four, three. That's my birthday and year. I have 44, which made me the five of spades. Let's slow it down. I'm going to go very slow. 
So everybody is, it understands it. So you were yes, born on April slow. the 3rd. Yes. All right, so let's go to April the 3rd. You are a five of spades. Yep, I have that one. All right. And I think I'm a nine of spades next. All right, so five of spades, born on April the 3rd. Mm -hmm. So April the 3rd is Aries. So you go one, yes. two, three. So nine of spades. And then right. I'm lost on the, on the last one. Okay, it's the number three. So it's ruled by what planet? Mars. I thought Aries was ruled by Mars. We're not dealing with that. We're dealing with your number. Okay. Your number so Mercury. is ruled by what planet? Jupiter. Mercury. Number three? Yep. I'm showing Mercury. it now. So you can look at the screen. Mercury. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So now the Mercury space is how many spaces from your birth card? Oh, so it's just one space for my birth card. Okay. So now, what is your... That's the Jack of Heart. Bingo. There you go. Got it. Thank you. You are welcome. That's why I was getting confused, uh, Dr. Ali. I'm a three diamond. Okay, September. what's your birthday? September 8th. Let's go to it. September 8th. September 8th. Three of diamonds. All right. And you're a Virgo. Three yes. of diamonds, Virgo. All right. Let's go. All right. Three of diamonds. So you're a Virgo. So what is your planetary ruler card or character card? Because Virgo is ruled by what planet? Virgo. All right. So so I'll move over one space to the left. One space to the left. So let's go. What would be your card? The A, the one to the left. What is that? A, um, Ace spade. of spades. Ace yep. of spades. Right. So September the 8th, if you want to find your key card, eight is ruled by what planet? Saturn. What space is Saturn from your birth card? Five fifth space. All right, so let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Got it. Got it. Thank you. You are welcome. Can I try mine one time? Absolutely. October 20th. October 20th, two of spades. Oh, excuse me, two of clubs. Two, two of clubs, okay. All right, so October 20th is two of clubs. October 20th is Libra. So your ruling planet is what? Moon. Nope. Nope. Venus. What is it? What, what planet rules Libra? Venus. Oh, Venus. Uh. All right. So now your Venus space. Second space left. Yep. Oh, my bad. All right, so second space. One, two. Jack of diamonds. Jack of diamonds. All right, thanks a lot, I appreciate it, Chief. And then your planetary ruler card, I mean, number card or key card is what? Uh, Third card. Two. Oh. Two. So, what space would you choose based on a two? Let's go back to it so you can see it. Moon, moon space. Moon right. space. That's one to the right. Bingo. Seven of clubs. I mean, seven of space. Seven of space. All right. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. All right, so um, it's pretty easy to find those first three cards. I know if you're new to it, it's a new experience, and I, I totally understand. Um, the only thing that we will stress further, because, um, you know, we periodically we'll just have random classes where someone from the cosmology department 
will come and you know do a class with y'all to teach y'all some things with this system only go this at this preliminary level only go by the instruction and i know it's you know new instructions or new things but all of you should right now be screenshotting this i'll make sure i email this powerpoint so that you can save this particular information we do have a group on facebook um matter of fact let me see if i can find that real quick so that you can uh be in that facebook group because it does help with understanding um cars a little bit better let's see i forget the name of this group if i forget it right now i'll i'll make sure i share it in the email All right, so I think this is it right here. Let me share this so y'all can see this because we do have a group on Facebook. There's, there's a few of them, but um, I don't know if I created this or Kuku Khan created, but either way, this is a group that we use. Um, and you can go in there and you can shoot some questions, you know, throughout the day. Sometimes we're taking breaks, you know, when I'm taking breaks from work, I'll go online, check the arm the government group, see if people got questions or, you know, check these groups and you might shoot a question that you can get a live answer for when we are not in orientation class or these classes. Again, the first, the, the, the reason why we are learning these first three is so you can begin to study, um, what they mean. All right. So let me see. If this is one I had a paper, I know it was one of these. I had a note where it had list all the cards and their meanings. It might be in this group somewhere as a as a document. But if not, I can share that easily. I can copy and paste it. Um you know, into the group. But join this group, make a request to join this group so you can get in there and get, you know, uh, communication throughout the day because that becomes important. Everybody needs to know this information that we just, um, we just talked about. Everybody needs to know it, all right? Um, it is something that will come up later in use. If you look at the free book that we gave you with the Immaculate Conception, you'll notice in the back, it has this very information in there. And this is so you can type your child with those same three. And we all need to learn those. Um, so this is what I'm gonna to do tonight. And I know some of y'all might not like this. I have to cut this live short because I'm not at home and I'm traveling. And whenever I'm traveling, I need to get back home so I can get back on my regular pace we're getting other things that y'all need to do because I can't do it on the road um, because you know I'm just I'm not going to be able to be efficient. So, so I know some of you have lagging things that you need you know attention towards or whatever. Um, but I'll be back home tomorrow so I can handle some of those items and you know knock some of those things out with um, some of the people that's that's there to help me with it. Uh, but right now I'm on the move and uh, you know. I'm traveling on highways to get back to uh, my destination. But we did go over enough tonight to save this class. Now, all the other classes are up, so you can review them, especially the last one we did on nationality and the orientation information. That, that's very important um, that you look at that. The next thing is this weekend on Sunday, I will announce to the local people who are here where we're going to meet at. We're basically going to meet at the same location that we met at last time. And um, if you are in a local jurisdiction and y'all met up, that's cool. Um, you can use the um, the honor group on Facebook to talk about uh, people who might be closer to other people so they can you know, all link up. You might be close to somebody in Houston or Dallas or ATL or 
Miami, Fort Lauderdale area, and you want to link up with some of the other nationals who are in those places to do your uh, PT test. But we do have a PT test. I'll make sure tomorrow that I send out the information for the PT test. The only thing that we're going to add to the PT test this week is what we call um, drilling. The drilling will make sure that you know your preamble and your 12 general orders. They are inside of your protocol manual. I will post them, study them, memorize them. Okay. Everybody should know the preamble and be able to recite it by heart. Everybody should know those 12 general orders. You might not be able to learn it by Sunday. That's okay. You're going to eventually learn it. And the drilling is when we get in ranks, brothers and sisters, if you've been in the FOI, you know how what we're talking about. And you literally get questioned in the ranks to recite the general orders. It sharpens your brain. You're going to learn command of execution and uh, the drilling techniques, which we'll uh, probably stream those so people can understand what those are. I'll send out a little note on them. And um, that's something that will be added to this week's basic training. And uh, it's same uh, training that MGT, FOI get, but it's, it's uh, sharpens the mind, sharpens the brain, and gets you in a position where you can respond quickly. All right, that is, that is something that um, increases your neuroplasticity when you're asked to memorize something and called to memorize it on the spot. So we wanna make sure that we get those 12 general orders out and the preamble so that people can memorize those. Um, we'll send that out to you uh, in the morning and uh, you have your actual PT test and I'll make sure I send out a, a little list in case you don't have a format to, to record all the information. And all you have to do is take it. Um, we'll have another uh, communication prior to that. But when you're doing the PT test, take your time. You're not there to impress anyone. You're there to exercise. The most important thing you have in exercise is your focus and your breath. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth slowly, controlling your heart rate. The breath controls the heart rate. If I start breathing fast right now, you can take my pulse and it'll make my heart breathe faster because the heart is a valve, a gas and a liquid valve. If your breathing is slow, your heart rate will be slow. So that's the one thing that we're gonna to have to learn to master when we're exercising is that type of focus because we're putting the body under stress, but we're also doing interval training, which means we're not doing long periods of cardio, all right? And our last basic training, we're going to do some sprints for those who are able to. If you can't do the sprints, you can speed walk. All right. Um, but the idea is to get through that. So Sunday, we'll be doing that. We'll make sure that we stream live, you know, Instagram, Facebook or whatever. So y'all can see us, you know, going through our PT tests and same exercises. The only thing that is added is the drilling and the uh, recitation of um, general orders and um, preamble. So that is all we have for you tonight. We're going to save this. Make sure you get this by tomorrow so you can use this as a study tool. It's an excellent study tool. I didn't want to stay on here long. We've already been on here two and a half hours. I don't want to be on here um, for three, four hours because I know I got to get, you know, get up very early and make it back so I can do more work for people who need things done tomorrow. Um, I think that's all the announcements that we have for now, but thank you for your patience tonight. Something new, but you will learn this information. And if you're interested in the courses, um, only the people who have done dissertations can do courses that are ARNA accredited. We love y'all, we love people doing courses, but you gotta do your dissertation. And as of now, only uh, me and Baak have done those dissertations. Um, they're available, you know, people can do them. We show you where to go to sign up for those courses. We need more people to do dissertations so we can increase the think tanks and spread the responsibility of the information so that it's disseminated properly. Um, with that being said, thank you for your patience tonight. I will see y'all again, what's today? One time before Sunday. I think that's gonna be Saturday for a brief live and then uh, we'll do Sunday. So. Thank you. I'm about to go get myself something to eat because we have not eaten. Right? I know, right? All right. 
Talk to y'all later, family. Thank y'all. Love y'all. Peace. Peace. Love you too. Peace. 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 Peace.